Hey, my name is Maddie. This is my co-pilot, Eliza, and this is our van, V. V is a 2017 136 wheelbase 2500 high roof eco diesel Ram Promaster van. I purchased her used with 69,000 miles in Seattle, Washington and have been traveling full time with Eliza for the past four months. I did complete the build by myself, but I couldn't have done it without the hospitality of my older brother, Matt. He let me stay with him for the five months it took me to finish the build. He let me use all of his power tools as well as taught me how to use a few of them. And he let me virtually take over his garage for the entire duration of my stay. I would love to show you guys around, so without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing you'll notice as soon as you walk into the van is my full length mirror that covers the door of my floor to ceiling closet. It was super important to me to have a big storage space, especially since, as we'll talk about later, I omitted the garage. And this is great because I'm able to fit all of my clothes, laundry, almost all of my climbing gear. I have bathing suits, towels, linens, jewelry, medicine, all sorts of nicks and bobs in here. And the full length mirror was just an added bonus of being able to open the space and also just make it feel a little bit more homey when I'm getting ready in the morning. Right next to my closet is my kitchen area. There were a lot of elements I knew I wanted to include in the van to make it feel homey, but I will say I think that my oven is one of the more luxurious items I chose to include. This is a 21 inch gray stone oven and three burner stove. It is propane powered and also has a 12 volt supply leading to this switch that lights up the knobs blue. I'm really grateful that it came with this glass cover. It provides an excellent splash guard whenever the burners are in use and also allows me to have extra counter space whenever they are not. I will say I was a little bit worried about the loss of storage space by including this oven, but I've been able to store some of my extra pots and bowls in the oven when it's not in use and the door is heavy enough that it doesn't blow open when I'm driving and everything stays nice and secure. These two cabinets are entirely dedicated to kitchen storage. So this first cabinet is my pantry. It holds all of my dry goods. I will say it is a little bit of a chaotic cabinet. A lot of things fall out because I have still not gotten around to adding lifts to either of the shelves in the hopes that maybe that would prevent everything from falling out quite as much as it does. But otherwise, I do really like this cabinet just because it's huge and I have so much room to fill it to the brim with goodies, which I never fail to do. This other cabinet is purely for kitchenware. It was really important to me to be able to host between four or five friends in the van for dinners or luncheons. And so I wanted to make sure to get enough plates, bowls, mugs, and cups to do just that. So this is full to the brim with that. I also have a few random things in there like my mortar and pestle, tin foil, tea, and some other random spices. Below my cabinets, I have some decorative storage, including this spice rack, which I actually added on the very last day of the build. I had this magnet that I had thought I was going to be using for my knives, but it wasn't quite strong enough to hold my knives. It was, however, strong enough to hold these miniature magnetic glass spice jars. They have little magnets on the inside of each lid and um, the set came with these labels. And so I just filled them with my favorite spices, stuck them on and called it a day. They almost never fall off. Sometimes I'll nudge one out of the way. And there's been a couple times when these guys here at the end that are kind of sticking off the edge, they'll fly off sometimes, but the lids have never come undone, so I haven't really ever minded. And I also have this fruit basket that I love, love, love. I love having all of my fruit in sight. It makes me eat fruit more, and I also just think it's pretty. And then the last thing I have up here, besides, of course, some extra books that I have on display, is this knife rack. I was a little bit concerned, as were a lot of my friends and loved ones about whether or not the magnet would be strong enough to hold the knives and i'm very happy to report that this specific magnet is super strong and no knives have ever fallen while i've been driving around alongside making sure that my van felt really beautiful and homey i just wanted it to be really practical and this is something that i use every single day 
Moving right along to drawers, this first drawer is actually not kitchen storage. It is my office supply drawer. I have everything in here from pens, pencils, rubber bands, stamps, to extra camera equipment, and even my Dungeons and Dragons dice. I use this drawer every single day and it really comes in handy. This second drawer, we're moving back into kitchen storage. This is my utensils drawer. I have, going right along with the hosting thing, I have enough spoons and forks and knives under here to host between four or five people. And then I have all of your standard kitchen gadgets in here as well. In this last drawer, I store all of my bulkier kitchen items, including cutting board. I have a strainer, a protein shaker, and some extra pots and pans underneath there as well. And this last cabinet is actually not a drawer at all. This is where my propane is stored. If you open this door, my propane is in its own sealed box. Three of the walls are sealed with silicone, and then the door of it is closed with these hasp locks that provide tension on the door and prevent it from letting gas escape. And then inside of that box, there is my propane tank as well as a one and a quarter inch hole that's drilled through the box out through the bottom of the van. So in the event that there's a leak from the regulator or from the propane escape valve, all of that propane will sink out through the bottom of the van rather than escaping into my home. I also added an additional safety feature in the form of a solenoid ball valve that is connected to this switch. So whenever I want to use propane, I flick the switch on. A current is supplied to a ball valve that connects to my propane. The valve opens and gas can escape through my piping into my oven so that I have use of my appliance. And then whenever I'm done, I just make sure to flick this switch off again. This last drawer is my fridge drawer. I made the drawer especially for it. And I also designed this woodwork specially for this drawer. I also have it in a couple other places in the van that we'll talk about in a little bit. But I have the Dometic CRX cooler style fridge. I really like it because it draws very little power. Like I don't even notice it drawing power. If we turn around and face the other way out the door, we arrive at my bathroom slash I guess dishwashing area. Um, I have the Vigo Farmhouse 14 inch sink and I also have the infamous Krauss black spigot. A lot of van lifers get this exact setup and I totally see the draw why which is obviously why I purchased it myself. It's just so beautiful and I actually do like the size of sink. I can imagine it would be too small for a couple to be able to wash all their dishes but living alone with my pup this is totally reasonable and it's actually deep enough that I can wash my hair in it and I do that pretty often rather than using my outdoor shower which I'll talk about later. The reason I say infamous about this spigot is I only heard after the fact that during winter there's a risk that your pipes might freeze and I've heard that a lot of people have had this exact spigot crack on them literally crack into and so that's definitely something i'm worried about for the colder months otherwise it works really well one of the best features of it is that it has a really long hose and so if you want to shower out the side of your van or wash off your feet especially if you don't have an outdoor shower this really comes in handy it's also really helpful for me when i water my plants and i have a few different plants in here and it reaches um, this philodendron all the way up here and so i really do like it for that reason i used to have plants in this plant stand and the reason i got that idea was because a lot of van lifers have similar plant stands. I find that I like a lot of tropical green plants that don't really prefer a lot of sunlight and heat. And so when this door is closed, I have a window here. And even with the reflectix on it, it just gets so, so hot. And then I leave this door open all the time too. And so I was noticing that a lot of my plants that I was leaving there were just getting completely fried. And so I actually ended up taking out the plants and exchanging them with just decorative little things that I have in the van. When I was getting ready to install the sink in this butcher block countertop, I made sure to be as careful as possible cutting out the butcher block with the jigsaw so that I could keep the butcher block as a sink cover. And I have to say this is one of my favorite things that I did in the build and I would definitely do it again if I were to do a second build. 
I pretty much leave the cover on all the time when the sink isn't in use. I love how much extra counter space it gives me and I also just love being able to hide dishes that I don't feel like doing. Because this is a white sink, it does get dirty fairly easily and it's quick to wipe clean but rather than cleaning it all the time I just put on the butcher block countertop spray that down and I have a really nice clean looking space last thing I'll say about the countertops I just stick everything down with this really strong velcro material I will say it leaves a pretty sticky residue if you are to take it off so I would just keep that in mind that if you are going to include that you might end up having to sand it down and refinish it right down here is my toilet drawer I opted for the Nature's Head composting toilet. These are very expensive. It was just shy of $1,000. For me, it has been a worthy investment because I never have to rely on public restrooms. I never have to drive somewhere if I only want to use you know, indoor facilities and I never have to wander out into the woods to use a shovel, which is not something I'm opposed to, but again, it's not something I really wanted to do all of the time. One other thing I actually did want to mention about the composting toilet is that I have to empty out the liquids every other day and I have to exchange the compost every other month. So something to keep in mind, no matter what, if you're living in a van and you have a toilet in your van, you are going to have to deal with your sh On the bathroom side drawers, we have a top drawer that is entirely devoted to socks, many of them silly. The second drawer is devoted entirely to toiletries as well as makeup and some daily vitamins. This last cabinet is my utilities closet. So I have room for trash as well as my daily use cleaner. I have paper towels as well as paper bags behind the paper towels that I'll use for recycling. I also have a fire extinguisher, a fire alarm, and propane detector. I have a handheld vacuum as well as this collapsible broom that I use pretty much every single day. I also have laundry detergent and Listerine, so this cabinet comes in handy. One of my favorite parts about the van is my table. I specially made this table on a day that I didn't particularly feel like doing plumbing. I definitely have to say I've always felt more like the artist than the builder and a lot of this build was figuring out how I could still be wearing the artist cap while I was designing and making everything work in here. And this table is definitely one of those things. There's a lot of quirky bits to my van if you look up close, but I think that I was able to capture the overall feel that I wanted with the space. And I think that this table really brings it all together. I used quarter inch ply and cut it all out with a jigsaw and then used Danish oil and a wood stain espresso to to stain some of the boards and then I got plexiglass and I just cut it to size to fit around a frame that I added with some trim that I found from Home Depot. Alongside the espresso stain of the woodwork I am a true coffee lover at heart and used the color Swiss Latte, a warm white, for my shiplap walls and the cabinetry. The ceiling is 8th inch cedar tongue and groove panels and the floor is a laminate vinyl planking made to look like chestnut wood. I opted for the dinette setup, meaning my dining and living room transforms into my bedroom every night, or almost every night. It is a bit of a pain in the butt to change it back and forth, but if I were to do another build, I honestly would choose the exact same setup. I love the versatility, having the option of turning it into this big dining room space or a big workspace where I can spread myself out, and it means that I can have a bunch of friends over and host those dinners. When I first got this build, I had the table on a mount that I made myself, and I just found that it wasn't as sturdy as I had hoped, so I recently bit the bullet and bought the Lagoon mount, and I really do love it. I love the ease of access it has, and it definitely feels like my table is far less tilted than it used to be. I especially like when I'm feeling like being in lounge mode and I just want to kick my feet up. I'll usually move my excessive amount of throw pillows and then I can actually just move the table to a horizontal position and that makes it a really nice space where I can use the table if I want but I can also again kick my feet up and feel like this is more of a lounge space rather than 
a dining room. It was also really important to me to make sure that I kept all of my books in the van. I'm a huge bibliophile and I was not willing to give that up. A lot of my books are at my mom's house, thanks mom, but I was able to install this shelf and I'm able to keep a bunch of books on it and that has brought me a lot of joy. Right next to it, you'll see my plant, Phil. Philip has been with me for a very long time, four or five years now. Uh, he did take a spill when I first got in the van, but he is still trooping along and I have been fertilizing him and have hopes that he'll regrow. I have two more cabinets. In this cabinet here, I have a bunch of PJs. Yes, I have an entire cabinet devoted just to PJs and loungewear. And this other cabinet is actually, oh, sticking, devoted entirely to art. I have this thing full to the brim. It has everything from paint to canvas. It has leather work, all sorts of fun things in here. And I should use it more than I do, but I definitely love having it in here. So I did choose to omit having a big garage in favor of having the dinette setup that was pretty low to the ground, but I do have a kind of mini garage and that is this sliding storage area. It can slide all the way off in either direction and I have an insane amount of storage in here. I store a lot of additional climbing equipment, electrical, extra shoes that I don't use as often. I also store all of my tools and any home renovation stuff that I still carried with me after I finished the build. I really do love this thing. I say that it's kind of a mini garage because in order to access it fully, I kind of do have to have the back doors open. I am able to access my toolkit from inside because it's on the compartment closest to my kitchen area. But other than that, it does kind of act like a little garage space. While we've got the back doors open, let's talk about what's stored in either of my seat benches. And that one over there is the entirety of my electrical system. On top of my van, I have 400 watts of solar panels from Renogy and those power four 100 amp hour lead acid batteries that are also from Renogy. I also have enough room in my electrical compartment to store a lot of random gear, including an extra towel, my bike seat, my a lot of my backpacking and camping gear, and that's been really great. I also have a 2000 watt inverter that powers my AC outlet where I can plug in things like my handheld vacuum or my computer charger, which is super important for me. Those batteries also power everything in the van from my dimmable light switches for both my overhead lighting and my under cabinet lighting in the kitchen to my toilet fan, my fridge, my USB outlets, and my Max Air fan. I absolutely love my Max Air fan, especially when I use it alongside my sliding bunk window. It comes with a slidable bug screen as well, and I just find that the air circulation that I get at night when I use both of them together feels so good and gives me such a good night's sleep. I think if I was going to do another build, I would probably put a bunk window on the other side too, just because of how nice it is. I have a battery monitor from Renogy that I use all the time, and it just lets me know how much energy I've already sucked up, and I really like it. It's a little bit cheaper than the Vitron monitor. I think it's about half the price, at least it was when I purchased it, and it works really, really well for me. I've actually been so happy with my electrical system that I forgot to mention that I also have a 20 amp DC to DC charger from Renogy. This would enable me to charge my house battery while I'm driving, only I haven't installed it yet because my battery bank has been sufficient enough that I never fear that I'm running out of battery until about a week ago, one time. <laughs> so I'll probably install this around winter when there's less sun and more drive time, but until then, I'm good without it. Under this seat bench is my entire plumbing system. I have a 33 gallon freshwater tank that feeds both my sink and my outdoor shower that I feed through this inlet. I have a hose that I can connect to any standard garden hose attachment. And I also put a drain at the bottom of the tank so that if I want to winterize the van at any point, all I have to do is park it on a steep slope and let it drain out through, again, my hose. My outdoor shower works pretty well for me. 
all you have to do is flick this open and I have a coiled hose as well as a shower curtain that I store in the seat bench and can hang on my back doors. I also have attached some cordlet to the bottom of each side so that I can tie it to the door securely so it doesn't blow around when I'm trying to take a shower. And I can take really quick cold military showers. I probably only do that like once or twice a month just because even with a military shower it uses a lot of water but for the most part I would say that my 33 gallon tank works super well. I have to change my water every two to three weeks and that's with washing my hair in the sink a couple times or maybe even taking an outdoor shower. I also have a seven gallon gray water tank that is mounted on the bottom of my van. This front section is definitely a little bit more of the messier storage area of the van. Up here I have things like my stand-up paddle board that I knew I wanted to fit in the van. I'm very happy that I have footage of me putting it up there already because I can't even express how difficult it is to get it in and out of its position every single time but it is so so worth it to have it with me and i have used it enough to justify it i also have other things up here like grocery bags as well as my shower bag my shower bag has everything from shampoo conditioner body wash to razors so anytime i'm going to take a shower outside of the van i can just grab this and be ready to go that section also has things like a light medications her treats and some other goodies too so I can fit a ton of storage up here I also hung this curtain rod here so that this insulated curtain can be pulled when I'm ready to go to bed at night it provides privacy and then also you know a little bit more temperature control in the van as well in this front section in front of this swiveled chair I end up storing my duvet cover during the day, which is not exactly the most ideal, but it was really my only option. And I don't mind it so much just because I end up leaving my swivel seat in this position all the time and you can't even really see the duvet cover. The swivel seat is excellent as pretty much any van lifer will tell you. It really opens the space and I, I definitely get a lot of use out of it. Besides the duvet cover, I also end up storing Eliza's dog food as well as a day backpack that I use on the regular. In the middle there, we have Eliza's special cushion. She always drives with me, my little co-pilot. She never really likes being on the bed and I'm okay with that. And that concludes the van tour. If you're interested in following along on me and Eliza's adventures, feel free to subscribe to this channel. I post videos almost weekly, and I also have an Instagram. I will link it down below. I'm also going to be linking a lot of the products that I talked about in this video, so if you have any questions about those, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! In like so and then I'll just move I thought out no out out no 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 out 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 I don't have the flies